Hi, I'm Chris Rowan. I'm the CTO for the IP group of Cadence, and I'm going to talk to you today about optimizing neural networks for low energy and high throughput. It's clear that these optimizations are important because neural network methods are now being used in a wide variety of products, in automotive, in mobile, in consumer, and we need those systems to be very efficient. We need them to run off of batteries, we need them to operate at high frame rates, we need them to achieve very high accuracy in their recognition tasks so that we get the safest, most convenient, uh, most productive uh, environments for doing this kind of a recognition task. So let's look inside of a neural network and see what really has an impact on it. A neural network, as you may know, starts with some visual input, and it may be an RGB uh, color scheme, so we'll have a few images or a few layers coming in, and then we go through a series of, uh, of filters, really 3D filters or 3D convolutions, which create feature maps, create more and more layers of interpretation of patterns that are found in the input layer. So we might have a layer one which takes these three frames and computes a large number of different feature maps, recognizing different kinds of very primitive local patterns. And then we have another layer which takes these as inputs and creates yet more layers of more sophisticated features. So patterns of patterns. And ultimately, we go through some layer n, which will ultimately recognize which of several categories is the best fit based on looking across all of these different patterns of patterns of patterns that we've identified in the process. And each layer is got to have access to some key data. And that data consists of both this information itself, that is, the processed, filtered, convolved version of the data, and coefficients which are used to perform this filtering. And so what we find is that we are going to effectively read and write, co read coefficients, and read and write data at every level. And this is a major contributor to the performance and to the energy associated with these filters. So what are the things that matter? Well, the things that matter are going to be, well, how many cycles does it take? And that's going to be related to how much work is done at each level. And that's related to how many feature maps you have, what are the dimensions of the feature map, what are the dimensions of the convolution kernel or the filter which is applied at each level. And you can figure out how much total work needs to be done by essentially multiplying out all of those different dimensions to see how much data needs to move in, how many multiplies and adds need to be performed, and that will dominate the power and dominate the throughput characteristics. So what are the things that you do about it? Well, you work to come up with the most optimal network. For a given level of recognition, you want to find what is the smallest network, the one with the fewest feature map, the fewest layers, the fewest connections, the smallest convolution kernel. That will be really important to both energy and to memory bandwidth, which ultimately turns into energy. Furthermore, the total compute load is going to essentially give you a picture of what rate you can process these uh, input images. So if you have a given amount of computational throughput. So suppose you have a network that requires 10 billion operations per frame, per image coming in. And your hardware is capable of sustaining about 100 billion operations per second. Well, that means 
you're going to have a maximum capability of about 10 frames per second. So that if you want to go faster than that, you can choose hardware which has higher throughput, or you're going to choose a network which requires less than 10 billion uh, operations to do all of this neural network analysis on each frame. Similarly, you're going to look awfully closely at the memory requirements. And in many cases, the memory requirements are actually dominated by the flow of coefficients into each of these, particularly in the later layers, which are often fully connected layers, which means there is one coefficient for every single multiply operation. By choosing carefully the kernels, by minimizing the number of, of layers, especially in this fully connected latter part of the pipeline, you can significantly reduce the amount of memory which is required and therefore improve both the energy required for memory and uh, improve the performance because you're not limited by the performance of the local memory or often limited by the performance of the remote DDR memory which is required to feed these large sets of coefficients. So those are the key issues associated with driving for performance and efficiency in neural networks. Think about the network structure, think about what the hardware is, think about the size of the sets of coefficients, the data which needs to flow from layer to layer, and think about how you make trade-offs within your goals of accuracy. Thanks very much, and I look forward to seeing you on another Whiteboard Wednesday.